Hola, que tal? Como estas? Welcome back to Spanish Lessons with Professor Jason. In today's lesson, what I want to cover are the differences between the verbs ser and estar, and talk a little bit about the verb haber as well. Now, what you probably already know is that when you want to express ideas that in English would take the verb to be, um, forms, for example, such as am, is, are, was, and were, in Spanish, you have to choose between the verbs ser and estar, all right? So what I want to do in this lesson is to present, present um, some guidelines and some examples so that when you come to that fork in the road of Spanish between ser and estar, you'll be better equipped to decide, should I go with ser or should I go with estar, all right? And at the end of the lesson, I'll talk a little bit about the verb haber as well. All right, what we're looking at here is the verb ser, conjugated for each of the subject pronoun positions in three of the most common tenses, the present tense, the simple past or preterite, and the imperfect. So if you want, go ahead and pause the video here and you can review those conjugated forms. One primary use of the verb ser is to indicate place of origin and or nationality. So for example, ¿De dónde eres? Soy de Argentina. Mi mejor amigo es mexicano. Hillary Clinton es norteamericana. Rafael Nadal es español. Ser is also the verb we use to indicate possession. ¿De quién es esa computadora? Esta computadora es de mi hermana. Estos libros son míos. La decisión es tuya. Another use of ser is to indicate the material that something's made from. For example, esta chaqueta es de cuero. Las sábanas son de seda. Esa escultura es de bronce. Okay, another important use of the verb ser is to talk about dates and times. So, for example, ¿Cuál es la fecha de hoy? Hoy es domingo, el 13 de septiembre. Mi cumpleaños es el 5 de abril. ¿Qué hora es? Son las tres y media de la tarde. All right, we also use ser to indicate a person's occupation, religion, or political affiliation. Por ejemplo, yo soy profesor de español. Mi amigo Jorge es mecánico. Muchos peruanos son católicos. Tengo amigos que son republicanos. Mis tíos eran comunistas. We also use ser to indicate the location of events. La reunión fue en la oficina del abogado. La fiesta va a ser en casa de Ángela. So the location of events. Many impersonal expressions, and these are expressions that don't have a personal subject, also use the verb ser. For example, es importante que te levantes temprano. Es necesario que estudies mucho. Or, es mejor que ellos trabajen juntos. Impersonal expressions. And finally, with adjectives, ser usually indicates a permanent or inherent characteristic of the person or thing being described. Here's some examples. Mi hermana es baja. Las camisas son rojas. Mi abuelito es viejo, pero mi tío es joven. Albert Einstein era muy inteligente. Las modelos son bonitas. Las casas en este barrio son grandes. So inherent or permanent characteristics are described with ser. Okay, we've just looked then at an overview of the conjugations and some of the primary uses of the verb ser. Now let's switch verbs and take a look at the verb estar. Okay, so what you're looking at now is the verb estar conjugated for each of the subject pronoun positions in the present tense and in the imperfect, which is the most common past tense in which we use the verb estar. So if you want to pause for a second and review the conjugations, you could do that now. All right, now one key usage of a star is to refer to physical or geographic location, whether temporary or permanent. So for example, las flores están encima de la mesa. Buenos Aires está en Argentina. El abogado está en su oficina. El parque está cerca del centro. Hace una hora, ellos estaban en el aeropuerto. Estar is also used to form the progressive tenses, which indicate that an action is or was in progress at a specific point in time. For example, Mis padres están descansando en la sala. Ana está hablando por teléfono. Tú estás viendo este video. Nosotros estábamos lavando la ropa. 
Estar is also used in numerous idiomatic expressions. For example, estar de acuerdo con, to agree with, estoy de acuerdo con mi colega, or estar a punto de, to be about to do something, nosotros estamos a punto de salir, or about to leave. Estar de buen or mal humor, to be in a good or bad mood. Ella estaba de buen humor ayer, she was in a good mood yesterday. Or estar en forma, to be in shape, los atletas están en forma. Now, unlike ser, which is used to describe permanent or intrinsic characteristics, estar is used with adjectives to indicate temporary physical or emotional states or conditions. So, for example, ¿Cómo estás? How are you? Estoy muy bien, gracias. Los estudiantes están cansados. Mi hermana está enferma. Jaime estaba borracho cuando salió del bar. María está muy contenta con la noticia. So, uh, temporary physical or emotional states or conditions. Use estar. Okay, that pretty much covers things for ser and estar. However, sometimes the equivalent of is, are, was, or were may be expressed by an impersonal form of the verb haber, such as hay or había. Okay, now these, ver these verb forms are used to say that something or someone exists, existed, or is or was present. Okay, so it's is, uh, was, are, were, sort of in a general sense of existing. For example, if I want to say that there are five people in my family, I would say, hay cinco personas en mi familia. In that sentence, hay, in a personal form of the verb haber, means there are. Okay? Here are a few more examples. Hay muchas personas en la clase. Hay varios cuadros de Van Gogh en ese museo. Fuimos al mercado, pero no había pan ni queso. All right, this has been just a quick overview of the verbs ser, estar, and haber. So if you're still a bit confused, keep reviewing these examples and see if you can come up with uh, others of your own for each of the categories. That would be a helpful um, homework assignment for you. And you'll have the differences between ser, estar, and haber sorted out in no time. Trust me. As always, I welcome your questions, comments, and suggestions, so please let me know what you think about this lesson. This has been Professor Jason. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hasta pronto. Ciao.